Welcome back to Guff Stuff Weekly Podcast. I'm Javen. And I'm Guff. Today we're going to start a series. Oh, series, how? Of episodes talking about the RPG genre within Mm. video games. Sounds good. So what I'd like to break this down into is um, we'll start today's episode with uh, CRPGs, short term for computer RPGs, role-playing games. I always thought it was classic RPGs. Mm. But apparently it's computer RPGs. And then in the next few episodes we might touch on JRPGs a little bit. Stuff like Chrono Trigger. Oh, gotcha. The, the Japanese <clears throat> RPGs. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them. Uh, we'll see if we can... <laughs> Wing something up. We'll see if we can wrangle up an expert. There you go. I'm sure we can find one. Uh, and then I would like to break into a further category of the 3D RPGs. Stuff like Skyrim... The Witcher, um, kind of the newer age stuff. Right. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, but yeah, we're going to start our adventure uh, with the CRPGs, and let's first and foremost talk about the hottest, newest <laughs> CRPG on the market, just dropped today as of the recording. Yep. Baldur's Gate 3, made by Larian Studios. Yep. Um, are they publishing it, too? Good question. I don't know. I will check I, that out. Maybe they are. I know that it's a... Uh... Yeah, they make it and publish it. So Larian Studios, a little history, uh, they are the, the great minds behind the Divinity series. Yep. Uh, most notably in recent history, Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, kind of brought back the isometric, top-down, control-your-party RPG. Yep. Um, they, they, it was kind of a love letter to the old games, uh, Baldur's Gate, uh, the original Fallout series. Icewind Dale. Icewind Dale. Um, Heck, you can even go all the way to Ultima Online. With, yeah. MMO. With some uh, really uh, cool modern features to it. Things like level designers. This is Divinity Original Sin. Okay. Game. Things like level designers. <coughs> uh, a full... Um, narrated voice acting catalog, which, having played the old CRPGs like Baldur's Gate and Fallout and Planescape Torment, right? Um, there was a lot of reading. Yeah, it was a game that like you were required to read and take in a lot of information. Yeah, information. That's true. Um, but so what I want to talk about is what do we like about CRPGs? What are some of our favorites? And what we hope Baldur's Gate 3 gets right. Oh, well, I've played it, so... Okay. In the, be- the beta. Yeah, why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Um, what initially attracted me... It wasn't even the Dungeons & Dragons thing that attracted me so much as that... I mean, that, that was part of it, but it was the idea that they took spells that normally don't appear in games. And I've played Neverwinter Nights. I've played Baldur's Gate 2. I've played all those games. They took something like Mage Hand, made it useful. Right. Like, it's, you've never had a game that takes your basic, low-level, at least not that I know of, spell, something like Mage Hand, and makes it useful. Like, what would you do that in most RPGs? It, it just, there's no mechanic for it. This one, you could push crates, you could push people, you know, not necessarily, you can't push people necessarily, but you could push... Yeah, yeah, I think you can push It's like people. a minor telekinesis. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's just like Mage had in the game. You know, and only 10 pounds of stuff can be moved. But you do it right, you can manipulate the environment and cause things to happen that you wouldn't be able to. Well, Baldur's Gate 3 is, like, with most of the Baldur's Gate games and the Icewind Dale and the yep. Dungeons & Dragons CRPGs, they were actually based on engines that were created from the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing tabletop game at the time, right? Right, yep. Okay, so this one will be based off of 5th edition. Yep, yeah, yeah, it's a 50, yeah, basically 1D&D 5th yeah. edition, yeah. Yeah, and so they took a lot of the things 5th edition did, like make, making Mage Hand useful. Yeah. Like, there's a whole character class that kind of revolves around it, isn't there? I, with that, the, I, I don't, I only played a couple of the character classes before I decided I didn't want to overwhelm, mm-hmm. play it too many, too many hours in the beta. I, I'm just thinking from, like, the tabletop. Yeah. Like, oh, the, the yep. Arcane Trickster... That's right, yeah, yeah the, exactly. That's, that's a big thing that's of a, theirs. Yeah, that's a huge thing, yep. yep. And that's, when they were doing the demos and stuff, that's kind of what got me in there. And then they weren't afraid to 
throw things like the intellectual devourer in there and yep. oh they have mind flayers yeah you start off in a mind flayer ship yeah so a, like, a, wow. a, a mind flayer spell jamming ship yep yeah, yeah, mind player spell jamming ship, and that's and the trailer is Gith Yankee on red dragons fighting a mind flare. Like yeah. that is like that's like epic level D and D stuff. Yeah, that that's a definite big hook. That's not Baldur's Gate one where oh I'm a I'm a lowly peasant yeah peasant whatever. in yep. Candlekeep right. No, this is pretty big deal. And like it, that's that's huge. Yeah, like, that's that's a. Honestly, a planescape or a multiverse level yeah. threat that you're yeah. dealing with in a video game. Yeah, and that that, that that's what got me. That's hooked. pretty exciting. I was like, "Wow, that's cool," and the graphics are fine. I mean, the, I'm not even a graphics guy so much because things like even like Caves of Cud are fine. Yeah, it's the, it's the mechanics of the game that are exciting. Mm -hmm. And that just the first time I've been excited about a probably an RPG since I. Probably played Neverwinter Nights the first Neverwinter Nights. Wow. Okay. I did play two, but that was more of a closer to four or a three, five, four, fourth edition version. Okay. I, I mean, it was good. I played it a lot, but I liked Neverwinter Nights original better than the two I did. And right. This one just got me. I'm ready to play it. Yeah. No, Unfortunately, I'm, I'm playing other games right yeah, now, yeah, so we, we have, we I'll have... just download it, let all the bugs get worked up before yeah. I really get into it, but. Yeah, I ended up picking it up while well, it was still in early access for like the last eight hours, and then now it's going to release. So I broke my rule of pre-ordering again. <laughs> well, but I, mean, I did demo the game before I bought it, good. and I read a lot of reviews. Yeah, and it's been pretty thoroughly vetted. I mean, it's been in progress for three years. Right. So there's a lot of feedback and things. Oh like yeah, that this company's it. been doing this for a long time. And Larian has a very good reputation. Yeah. Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 was an absolute knockout of a game. Right. Yeah, I, the, the studio, the I can't think of the guy's name right off the top of my head. He must be their head guy or whatever, but he did a lot of uh, like interviews with podcasts and just videos. And like, this isn't your typical uh, No Man's Sky type deal. Yeah. deal where he's doing interviews promising stuff. This guy's like, no, this is what happens in here. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. And he'd show you gameplay footage while he was playing. Not pre-recorded footage on some alpha engine. Yeah. This is like, I'm going to sit down, load the game up, and you get to see yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, it was... It was... It was... It was. Now, is this going to be the greatest RPG? I, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I played enough of it. I liked it, that I, what I played so far. Yeah. So some of the things I, I really look forward to in the CRPGs, especially the isometrics like the Baldur's Gates yep. and the Fallouts and stuff like that, I really enjoy um, the crunchy combat. You can almost like toggle it between real time oh, and right. um, turn based. Yeah. And so like you could pause the game, issue orders, yep. and then have everybody go through and so it's almost like a real time strategy in a sense. Right. In a lot of these, at games. least part of it, yeah. I don't well, know. You almost need that though. Yeah, you kind of do, especially like if you want to. Yeah, we were talking about it earlier a little bit. Now that I'm thinking about it, I guess during combat it is nice to have that pause. Be like characters sitting at a table taking their turns. Yeah, it it, it feels like you're solo playing a D and D yeah. tabletop, exactly. which is I think what they were aiming for. And Divinity: The Original Sin too really felt like that with the plethora of choices and paths you could go down. Yeah, I mean that game broke yeah. open a lot of things. Yeah, that game was a pretty. I did I didn't play a lot of it. I played a few hours of it, and then I was in another game already. But. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I don't know. I think your first question was, wait, what's my favorite? It's, yeah, we can just free flow this. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to think. I can't think. I'd say original Neverwinter Nights would be my favorite. I like I liked Baldur's Gate, too, also. I mean, I liked all the Baldur's Gate games. I liked the Icewind Dale. Mm -hmm. I didn't play that as much because I just had got it, like, right before I got married. And <laughs> yeah. Once you got married, you were doing just games that we could play together all the time. Right. And then... I'm trying to think any other. I mean I played Ultima series. I play I played a lot of older mud almost mud style games. The games that came out right after the MUDs multi user dungeons, which were basically text based graphic <laughs> engines. I don't know. It was really I don't know how to explain it. Anybody who's heard of the MUDs though would know what I'm talking about. Um Yeah, probably never Winter Nights would be my because I played a lot of hours in that. And then it, you could uh a few different times you, you could play as the dungeon master okay and you'd make up a dungeon for your friends you know and you could 
pre-populate, but then on the go, <clears throat> if your friends are having a too easy of a time, you could just quick spawn things in. Kind of like a random encounter. Yeah, you could throw random encounters on. You could put traps in, okay. just things that slow the party down, make it a little tougher on them, make it a little more exciting for them. All right. <clears throat> I love that. I, and there were so many mods out there. I mean, even today, you could go out there, and there's just guys who spent thousands of hours making, you know, seven, eight, ten part series mods, modules. So it's kind of like the original uh, Skyrim, where it was this huge community of people reaching out. Yeah, and, I, well, with Skyrim, games. though, it was all based on Skyrim World, with the Neverwinter Nights. These guys were creating their own worlds, and you, using the uh, Neverwinter Nights engine. I don't know if Baldur Gate's going to do something like that. I don't know. I haven't seen. Well, if they take no. a page out of Divinity Original Sin 2, there was a dungeon creator, like a okay. dungeon editor. Right, there you go. And so I'm sure the... And I think that... I don't know if it's in the game already or if it's going to be on release. Yeah, I don't know. I, they, there what? was so much stuff that they haven't released yet. Yeah. They released a lot. Don't get me wrong. They have released a lot during early access. But... They were holding some stuff back. Oh, I'm sure. You know, because they don't want you to have access to all the good, juicy stuff. So, mm -hmm. it'll be interesting. I don't um, know if I'm going to get time to play it anytime soon, but... I think, uh... I think my favorite... I kind of, like, break it up into, like, three different categories. Yeah. I have the sci-fi, the post-apocalyptic, yeah. and the traditional fantasy. Great. Uh, as far as sci-fi post-apocalyptic... Uh, for sci-fi, I played Shadowrun Returns, yeah, that's... and that game was absolutely phenomenal. The story was great. The game yep. pacing was awesome. Um, the Shadowrun universe is just really cool. We talk about it. Yeah, we reference it quite frequently. Yeah, no, it is. It was very good, and it was um, a wonderful game. The post-apocalyptic one I really liked was called Underrail, and it was a newer game. I think it came out in 2016, 2015. It might even still be in early access. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But uh, it feels a lot like the original Fallouts, right? Um, in graphical style and user interface and all that. Okay, and, uh, that one. It, it's it's pretty wild. Um, the creativity and depth of what you can do in that game, right? And then I think, as far as the Dungeons and Dragons fantasy ones go, I think Planescape Torment is probably my favorite. That that story is just <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> and the really followers played. you get in that game, I never just... I never really played too much of it. Oh. It's it's awesome. As a huge fan of the Planescape setting, yeah, um, it just it struck a chord with me right away. I know I read a lot about it. And I don't think I've ever actually owned the game though. Yeah, amazingly enough. The cool thing too is a lot of these old CRPGs. I don't know how well they play, right? But they are available on mobile as well. That's yeah. I don't know either. I know they're remastering. They're remastering a lot of them. Yeah, they, a lot of them have been like enhanced editions. Right. Or, yeah. I because I re went back and started Baldur's Gate again, and that works out pretty nice on the newer mo computers. Yeah. Uh, a, a shout out to one that I thought was really interesting. Uh, it's called Disco Elysium. There was a huge, like, fanfare about this a few years ago, but it's basically this like. It's not. It's like a dystopian role-playing game where you okay. play as a, a drunk has-been cop and nice. you're trying to investigate a murder. And, like, it, it's just crazy. The stats they have in that game are just wild. And you have this inner monologue of your of your brain <laughs> and it starts out with, like, the lizard brain talking to the monkey mind and, like, oh, it's, it's crazy. Interesting. But it's a really cool game. The art that. style is really neat, too. You, you said you played it? Yeah, I've, I've played through most of it. I think I got stuck on a spot, so I, I quit uh, I quit playing it. But I, I definitely want to go back and finish it. Right. Um, Interesting. But yeah, and then we have um, Juggernauts, like the original Fallouts. Yeah. Uh, Fallout right. 2, um, probably one of the best games ever made as far as RPGs go and story goes. Yeah, that was fun. That was a... That was a, that was a well, which... You ever played the original Fallouts? I know they're not the same as Fallout Three and Four, but they're definitely worth a while to go out and play them. They're definitely turn-based, though, so there is no running just pure action. You can't just run from everything. Everything's turn-based, which is cool. I if you get used to it, and it's, it's it's actually kind of nice because it slows the game down a little bit, and you're not just racing to the end. You can't race to the end, so right. you got to enjoy the game and read the text. Um, <clears throat> in the mid two thousands, there was a uh, 2015, 2017, and I think 2020, 
22 or 21, Obsidian Entertainment, which is also a phenomenal name in the gaming industry. Yeah. Um, they made Fallout New Vegas, The Outer Worlds. They made a few games um, that ran on a similar engine. Uh, the first one was called Pillars of Eternity. Yep. And that game's <sighs> story was awesome. I really enjoyed I play, that. I played, I started it, never finished it. And the storytelling in these worlds yep. that, that you can do is yeah, is great. I think the Pillars of Eternity actually had voice acting, too. Yep, there was a full-fledged voice cast. Um, Tyranny was another one they had. And that's an interesting game because you play in a world that is already lost to the big bad evil guy. Oh. And you are a scion of the big bad evil guy. Okay. And you're basically, your job is to get all these armies and different um, lieutenants of this big bad evil guy to agree upon a, to come to a, 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 <coughs> a consensus or a, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Compromise. There compromise. we go. They're supposed to compromise and accomplish this goal of tackling the last city okay. that they're trying to conquer. And it, you're given like X amount of time to do it. Right. Um, hmm. It's it's pretty cool. Interesting. Um, and then Pillars of Eternity 2 I haven't touched yet, but I've heard good things about yeah, it. Yeah, that's the one. I, I think that's the Oh, man. I don't remember. I know I bought one or both of them. I started playing one of them. I didn't, I didn't get um, that. The Shadowrun series also has three games in it that I know of right now. There's Shadowrun Returns, Shadowrun Dragonfall, which is set in Germany. Yep. Which is a pretty cool one. Uh, lots of... Uh, Fan made stuff for that, and then Shadowrun Hong Kong. Yep, Hong Kong. Yeah, the the yep, the, the spicy Asian one. Yep. Let's see here. Pillars of Eternity was it? The Pillars of Eternity? No, it's just Pillars of Eternity. I don't have it. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to get stuck on one thing here. I'm um, just trying to remember. Another series that was pretty well loved was the Wasteland series. Yep. Um, yeah, that was another I, top down, and they uh. They actually tie into like the Fallout New Vegas lore in a lot of things too. Oh, I didn't like, know that. The, the, there's some like allusions that are made between them that okay. like it, it, it can coincide with the Fallout universe, right? Or at least maybe it's a fan theory, but it, it's very well constructed either way, right? Yeah, we've talked a lot about uh, the top down ones. We haven't talked much. I mean, we've talked a little bit like the Elder Scrolls and stuff, but there's one that I know that a lot of people probably haven't even heard of. Well, I mean, maybe they have the Ryzen series. Ryzen. Yeah, R I S E N. Oh, and that's definitely an RPG. It's a. Those were on console, weren't they? First of all, yeah, I, they might have been, but I, the first one I played them were on PC. Yeah. The, oh, that's the THQ Nordic ones. Yeah. Okay. okay yeah. THQ. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Those pretty were... good series. Pretty good series. I've I've played. I haven't played through the last one, the Titan Lords yet. Well, last last one I own, but I played through one and two. Not maybe not all the way, but I played quite a bit of them. And I think I owned them before I bought them on Steam. Not I bought them on Steam, of course, because you have to buy everything on Steam. Yeah. But it's a good series. It's fun. There's a lot of it's new, a lot of interesting stuff and different types of combat, and it's kind of like a, um, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you have combat, but it's not like turn-based combat. It's just like an action-based combat, kind of like Dark Souls, where you okay, yeah, on the you go. can dodge and. Yeah, um, it's it's not that in depth as that, but it's it's. I don't think I'm pretty sure it's not turn based. Yeah, and like so, that's probably a good segue into uh, the 3D RPGs. Oh, yeah. Um, things like Skyrim, um, Doom, The Witcher series. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, oh. Doom maybe, yeah. but that's kind of a shooter. Yeah, no, it's a shooter. I was just being funny. Um. But as far as, like, other isometrics, are there anything that you... Is there anything that comes to your mind that, like, oh, this was a great game? No, I, I think we've covered a lot of them. I mean, if we're just talking RPGs. There's MMO RPGs that, were, that I thought were great that were isometric. You know, and Ultima Online, which is still running, is one of the first major RPGs. Yeah. And so maybe we'll do an episode on the MMORPGs too. Then. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we could fill some time with those. Yeah, I unfortunately I don't think you do much with MMOs. Do oh, I, I did though. Oh, did you? Oh, I Runescape. Did. I did. Yeah, I, I, oh, I played a lot of Runescape. That's right. I remember you saying that. I played that. a lot of Nine Dragons as well. Uh, I played a little bit of Mabinagi. 
Um, Never even heard of these games. Yeah, I've heard the, of RuneScape. Yeah, the, but I was, them, I was not playing RuneScape because I was playing Ultima yeah, or EverQuest. Yeah, a lot of them. See, so we have different sides right. of the story to tell. Right. Which is good. We'll cover more ground that way. Yeah. But that's probably enough for this episode. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3. Um, yeah, hopefully Re- it releases hopefully August 3rd. 2023, so I'm sure it's already released by now the time you hear this. Anyway, until next time.